What's up everybody? Welcome back to another day in Car Mechanic Simulator with me, the Virtual Mechanic, and today's beautiful project, our Mark 1 Ford Escort, currently with an insane V8 stuffed inside there. It will have a V8, just a slightly different one a little bit later on. This is the Ford Escort RS1600 Mark 1. It is the V8 edition. We got it from the auction house. It's in pretty bad condition. I mean, we've already seen the body. It's definitely, definitely in a pretty bad condition there. Did we get a good deal? No, but not by much, so I'm not too bothered. We bought it for 14026 and could sell it for 12541 losing out on 1485 but I'm sure we'll be able to claw that one back a little bit later on. The engine in this one currently is the V8 double overhead cam AXK engine. We are going to be swapping it. I asked you guys to decide. We got a couple of votes. We're swapping it to the Ford V8 Coyote engine in there. That's what's going to happen to this beautiful little Mark 1 Escort. She's a little beauty. She's just feeling a little bit sorry for herself. While we're here, though, don't forget to come and join us on Discord for the next competition. You could win and end up on my pin board or my cool wall, you know, when it eventually comes around to it to move it on there again we're currently building the mercedes-benz g-wagon for the competition everyone's building the same vehicle different styles some are building big off-road 4x4s some are slamming them down do whatever you like just come and join us on discord link in the description below it's a bit of fun we just do a competition every now and then and sometimes very occasionally there are some prizes so come and join us for that it's a lot of fun anyway now back to this video we need to get this car started and it is very very dirty so to start with, let's get it over to the car wash. Let's get it cleaned up. Mark 1 Escort being right-hand drive, definitely as it should be. Loving that little feature. Let's just get this beast cleaned, though. What colour are we underneath this dust and grime? I think there's some orange on there for definite. Oh, it's the Mexico red with an orange base. That's a weird combination, but there we go. We're not going to be sticking with the Mexico red, I can tell you that. But let's get the interior done. Get this beast back on the lifter. Get that V8 ripped out of there. Get everything else stripped down. Beautiful little escort up in the air. Are you ready for your heart transplant of that beautiful coyote? First things first, there is an oil pan, so we do need to drain all of that out. Ready to rip that engine out of there. We're definitely not keeping it, so we're just going to sell that one off the block and then build the coyote engine separate. But what do we need to take out to get this engine out of here? It is only rear-wheel drive, so we do definitely need to start with this drive shaft. So let's get you out. Out you come there. And I can already see the starter is there, which is a good sign. So out you come. And let's grab that little starter just up there. If I could actually do it. There we go. And then out with that big old chunk of a gearbox just there. Nice and easy. And we will also grab these front exhaust sections just to be on that safe side. So let's get you back on the ground and see if we can rip that beast of a V8 out of there. Let's go and grab you. Let's get you over and see if we've done it. Let's try. Nice and easy. That is what I like. Let's get you put away. And then what have we got going on inside this engine bay? Well, straight away, we've got a coolant reservoir. Let's just see if there's anything missing. Doesn't look like it. I can't see anything. We've got the battery. We've got the fuel tank. We've got the fuel pump. In fact, let's just grab the fuel pump and battery while we're down here. There we go. And back up towards the front. Then we've got, so we'll come off of this mode now. We've got a beautiful ECU Type A, Wishy Washy Reservoir, our cheeky little fuse box, brake servo, air filter with all the clips coolant reservoir wishy washy reservoir and a big old radiator with a fan housing kit attached to it nice and easy we need to drain some liquids we've got a little bit to drain no power steering in this one today or did i miss it please don't tell me i missed it no no power steering in this one today so let's get the liquids drained out of the coolant reservoir the wishy washy reservoir and that little brake servo right click additional tools drain tool click and hold on the container and it will drain out i'm gonna get the rest of this stripped out when we come back It'll be time to work on the Escort. Beautiful bodywork. Well, we got everything we need to get that Coyote engine back in. I have already tested it. Make sure it does fit. Let's just have a quick look because the Coyote engine is only 285 factory horsepower. It is what we're going to stick with. We said we were going to, but I do wish I'd stuck the twin turbo engine in there to make this one a little bit more insane because that twin turbo engine is a mental. But there we go. The Coyote engine is what we're going with. Let's get this stripped down, though. We need to get all of this bodywork off. So let's just start with that front clamshell. That was a nice easy piece. We will grab that license plate while we're there. Then we've got the front fender. Anything else around here apart? I'm not sure. Windshield, door. That's all missing by the looks of that. Out with the trunk, rear bumper. These lovely little lights. Out you come and out you come. 
And off with the door. And I think... Oh, no, I remember there is trim for this. I'm stuck on the pillar. Are we missing any of the trim? I don't think so. Let's grab the interior out. Just the one passenger seat left in this vehicle. Very, very, very sorry for itself. Is that all parts for it? Let's just have a look. See where we're at. Don't want that screen anymore. 1% on there. Did we get everything? We actually did get everything. That's always good to hear. Let's have a look then. So... Frame is at 26%. I bought the car for a little over 14,000. What do we reckon? I don't think it's going to be much. I'm going to say 1,200. 500. I was very, very, very far off. Quick jump in to the body shop for the Ford Escort. Four pages, so it isn't too bad. A couple of trunk options. One with the badges on, and I know I normally go for debadge stuff, but Ford Escort, you can't not. The badges would definitely be staying on this one. Then there's light options, wing mirror options. Uh, narrow fenders, wide fenders, narrow fenders and wide fenders, plus ones with mud guards. If you want the rally edition, we're not going for the rally edition there. Uh, then what else have we got? Uh, one rear bumper, more lights and wing mirrors, a few different hood options, still more hood options. What do we reckon? Probably with the hood catches and the Ford badges on there. Um, narrow fenders, front fenders, then the ones with the mud guards, then the normal ones. Race door cards, normal doors. Oh, a few different front grills up there. We're definitely going for a rounded lights one. I'm not sure whether I want black plastic or chrome yet. We shall see. Front bumpers with all the headlights, without all the headlights, or just with the chrome strips sticking out, as we saw there. I didn't mean to do that. I went too far. Then I know we've got trim because we can have black window rails, so on and so forth. Plus, there's a roll cage option as well on the engine cover. I do quite like the strut bar, though, so maybe we'll see what the airbox or strut bar looks like. Plus, a fuel door. And that is everything for the beautiful Mark 1 Escort. So now that frame's all sorted, we need to get all that bodywork sorted out. Ready to get it back on. Then get this on over to the paint shop and pick what colours we're going to do for it today. Time to get this beautiful Ford Escort's body all back together. Let's start with the hood. I have gone for the ones with the hood latches and the Ford badging on the front there. On with the fenders, just the normal ones which are non-narrow, the slightly wider ones on there. For the front grille, we just went with the black plastic. Didn't want the chrome trim all the way around the edges. I think it looks quite nice on there. Front clamshell, there's two of these. There's a one at A and B, should I say. A is pretty solid. You've got these little vents down the bottom. B's got the big circles up here. More of definitely the rally style spec on there. Headlights, just the standard ones. In you go. And then that lovely little front bumper. Just the chrome tipped corners on there. Then we got the door, windshield, let's get you in, a window, win did that mirror just automatically, no, nope. what, I'll put the mirror on even though it showed it was already on but never mind, that was bizarre, I have no idea what happened on there but there we go, on with the rounded mirrors, then we got the rear fenders which again non-narrow non ones, the wider body ones but they're not called wide body, they're just called the normal ones, in with the rear window, the badging on the back of that trunk there. And then the tail lights, I just kept them with the squared ones, not with the extra little pieces added onto the bottom. And then that lovely chrome rear bumper there. On with the rear right fender and then the fuel door, which we went for a painted one on there. Let's get the window in and this door in. Is it going to do the same thing with the mirror? It is indeed. I don't know what's going on with that. That mirror is not there, but it is there. So we're going to add it in so that hopefully it will be there. That kind of makes sense. In with the window. Uh, then we've got the trim. Here we go. I just kept it with the chrome window trim. Apparently, I've got two. I didn't mean to have two. Chrome window trim. Just keeping some of the chrome elements on there. Looking quite nice. I'm going to keep some of the chrome. We may even end up changing this front end to the piece with the black and the chrome on there. For the license plates today, we've just gone for Coyote on my VM plates because this is the Coyote-powered Ford Escort. Loving that. In you go and in you go. That should be everything for the bodywork. Let's jump in to the interior. We kept the steering wheel the same because it looks awesome, liking that steering wheel. And then for the front seats, we changed them to seat 11, lever A. In you go and in you go. And for the bench seat, we kept it as a moon bench, but a slightly different version of it in there. I'm hoping we can colour match some of that in the paint shop a little bit later to something that we're going to have on this beautiful livery. Now, is that everything? 96%. What am I? I know what I'm missing. Open you up. Let's get that engine cover, which we went for the strut bar. In fact, I will just take it out very quickly and show you the airbox in there. There we go. Not a big fan of that. I like it, but definitely not the kind of thing we're going for for this build. So let's get you in. 
We'll change that back to the strut bar. Looking awesome in there. Now, is that everything? I certainly hope so. It is indeed. 100%, 100%, 100%. Let's get this beast into the paint shop. Let's give it some color. Well, here's what we've gone for today. It looks absolutely fantastic in this matte yellow with the white livery going around it. And then all of them chrome accessories I bought. I've chromed them black. I've force chromed them all black. I even had to change the uh, car part two, which was the trim. I wanted the one with the guttering in black, but you could only get it with an engine switch off here, which I wasn't really part of the aesthetic of this build. And then the normal one, whenever I tried to paint it, it was disappearing from my inventory. I tried a couple of times, so I spent a little bit more money than I should have. Eventually, I just settled for the black one of these that doesn't have the roof guttering on there, which is a bit of a shame, but it still looks good nonetheless. Very, very pleased with this. Looking fantastic. Even that strut bar is in a chrome black as well. What do you guys think of this livery? Looking beautiful. Black, com black bumpers at the back, front trim all black, and then inside, lots of yellow on these beautiful, beautiful seats, front and back. And then the steering wheel, if we just nip round to the other side, we just got predominantly a little bit of black on there. Looking very, very nice. Incredibly pleased with this yellow, white and black Mark 1 Escort. I'm going to get the engine all painted. It's quite yellow in there. We may use a splash of yellow, but probably not too much. Probably black and white with a little bit of yellow. We'll see how that goes. Not sure about the suspension. It's very black under there, so I don't want to use too much black. Probably going to be whites and yellows under there. It's going to look pretty good, though, I hope. So I'm going to get everything painted. Then we can start getting this all back together in just a little while. Let's get the Escort back onto the lift. That's everything painted and ready to go on our beautiful yellow Mark 1 Escort. Let's get started with the shocks. We've got yellow shocks, white springs, and white caps on there. Looking pretty good. Off you come. Let's start getting some of this in the car. The front suspension cross member is in a white across that middle there. Looking pretty good. Then we've got a steering rack, which does clip through the engine. But so be it in a white with the sway bar in a yellow. The front steering knuckle was also in a white with the inner and outer tie rods. Both in that matte yellow. Looking pretty good on there. Let's get the bushings in so that I don't forget them. These get done at a different time every episode because I always pretty much forget them. On with that shock, looking pretty good on there. Very long shocks. The white caps do stick into the engine bay, so we'll check them out in just a little while. Sway bar end link in a black with the lower suspension arm in that matte yellow. Looking nice on there. On you go and on you go. Then the knuckle cover is in the matte yellow with the wheel hub in a black on there. Let's just get you in and that little bearing. Then we've got our performance ceramic brakes on there. With a wheel hub in a white brake pad on you go. And then let's get them brake calipers on. Which are just in a chrome black. To go with some of the chrome black accessories we've got on the body. Such as the bumper and stuff like that. Looking very good there. Let's get down the back and get this all together as well. The real rear drive axle is in a white. We've got the knuckle in a black. Then the spring cap in a yellow. Same as the suspension at the front. With the spring in a white, but the cap is in a black instead of a white up here. Or down here, should I say. The rear shock is in the yellow, same as the front shock. And then the solid axle control arm is also in that yellow with the leaf spring plate in black. And the two bolts both in that yellow on top there just to sort of separate it and really finish it off. Rubber bushing, in you go. Bolt it up and then let's crack on. The uh, knuckle cover is in the yellow with the wheel hub in the black, but it is the drive axle, not the wheel hub. Excuse me, I do apologize. Then we got the ceramic brakes on there, brake pad, and then that lovely brake caliper in the chrome black on there, just to finish that off. Didn't finish doing up that bolt all the way. Looking pretty good there. Fuel tank, you are just in a cheeky little black with the fuel pump, just in that matte yellow. Carrying on with the yellow accessory theme on there, looking pretty nice. Don't know why I changed to that mode. Don't need that. Let's go down here, though. Do you know what? We'll throw this battery in while we're down here. Save us coming down the back in a bit anyway. I did remember to pick it up. So I'm going to crack on and get the rest of all this suspension finished. Then we'll move on to the beautiful engine bay before we go and build that stunning Coyote engine. There we go with the suspension all finished predominantly in white and matte yellow. That's a solid white, matte yellow, and then a chrome black just for the extra added pieces in there for good measure. Fuse boxes in in a matte yellow. But let's move on and let's get the rest of this engine bay all finished off and ready to go. Starting with the brake servo. Then we've got the wishy-washy reservoir and the stage 3 type A ECU. Really struggled to get that one out there. Don't know what happened. 
coolant reservoir in the Yugo. And then we got the radiator. Now, I've got to admit, from what I've seen so far, this is the only bit I'm not overly 100% pleased with. I'm about 90% pleased with because this yellow, obviously, is in that shiny yellow. And all the other yellows everywhere else is in a matte. It'll be all right, I'm sure. We'll just have to check how good it looks a bit later. Then we've got the fan housing kit in a black with a chrome yellow fan on there. That's the reason you can't paint these a light color at all. Black or nothing unless you chrome them. That's basically it. So there we go. In we go with that. Then we've got the air filter, which we have done in a white. In you go, in you go, and on you go with the air filter cover there. And then if we just go in, lovely little chrome black clips just to go around that one just to finish it off looking pretty good on there let's jump away from this though and have a look inside that engine bay you can see the yellow shock caps just coming through there looking pretty sweet the yellow of the air intake and then of that the yellow the white of the air intake and then the white bits just underneath there looking pretty good so far but we need to go and build that beautiful coyote engine so let's get into the other room it's not on the stand but it is a ready to go back on the stand with some of the bits already in there We've got the oil pan in a white, the block in that matte yellow. Let's get some other bits on there and get this one going. Alternator is in just a cheeky little black up there on you go. Then we've got the oil filter, which is officially in white, but it's only the rim that goes white. The rest of it stays yellow. Very on brand for this build. Then we've got the fuel filter in a solid white just up there. Onto the engine heads. Now, I didn't really want these black, but they've come out black nonetheless because... The yellow looks too gold and you can't get white. So, yeah, we just left it at that. It does look good in the black nonetheless, though. Let's get the other side on. In you go. Looking very nice on there. Get you all bolted up and then we'll crack on and get all of these innards in. Let's just find a nice little spot where we can see everything. We've got two camshafts per head, so four camshafts in total. Four spark plugs per head, so eight spark plugs in total. And eight camshaft caps per head, so 16 of them in total. Plus, on the end of the camshafts, there is one cam gear on either side. Then there's another cam gear after this little timing chain. In fact, we'll fit that in now. Can we fit the other cam gear in? We can indeed. So that's how they'll look both sides with the rest of the insides finished. So I'll crack on with that. Then we'll move on to get the front of this engine done. There we go. That's all the innards in. So let's crack on. Starting with these beautiful timing chains, one on this side. One on this side, then a single pair of shoes, in you go. Lovely dancing shoes for this Coyote engine, in you go, and in you go. There, there we go, nice and easy. Now we should have the timing cover, which is in that matte yellow on the front. Didn't know where the bolts were going to be. Again, there we go, in you go there. Then we've got the water pump, just in a cheeky little white, with the water pump fully in a black on top of that there. Looking quite good on there, pleased with that. Then we've got the crankshaft pulley, which is in a black as per normal. The idle roller, which is in a black as per normal. Then the power steering pump's in a white, because why not? I think I made that joke once before, and somebody loved it. French toast, I believe. On with the serpentine belt there, then a serpentine belt on the other side. Then we've got another idle roller, and then the last piece, just to finish it off, is a white belt tensioner in there for the front. Looking very, very nice there indeed. Now let's get to these head covers. Let's go. Now these are black. Again, didn't want them to be black. The only way you can get these not to be black is to force chrome them. And I didn't want to do that. So we've just gone with black on them. Hopefully, it's still going to look good when we drop it inside the car in a little while. Not too long now. Then we've got some ignition coils in there. Not painted because they do sit under a cover. So we're not going to worry about them, which is a lovely white cover. And it comes white. I literally did nothing to it. Just left it as it was with the powered by board on there. Looking good. On the other side, let's get you all in. All bolted up. And up to the same place before we move on to get that lovely intake manifold in and a few of the pieces such as the exhausts look at them on there you can see them what color are they going to be do you already know i do but there we go <laughs> let's get this all bolted up in you go there get that cover on top of that one then we've got a little throttle just on here in a white there we go just for an added splash of the white on the top there there is a reason for that fuel rails these are both in white as well Again, because they sit under this engine cover, which we've blacked out. So you do still a bit of that white there, but you don't really see the fuel rails too much. But with the yellow in the middle, it looks pretty good. Then the exhaust manifolds. Let's go. These are just in a force chrome black. The rest of the exhaust is all force chrome black as well. To so blend in with the force chrome black that we've got going on the bumpers and all the trim work around the car. It's all going to match in pretty well. Let's get you in on this side. In we go. All bolted up. And that is this beautiful, beautiful Coyote engine all finished. 
Let's just crack on. Let's just get it dropped into the car. Off the stand you come. Over we go. I haven't brought the crane over. I'm so far behind myself. Let's go and grab the crane. In we go. And let's get you dropped in and see how good this looks. Hopefully pretty epic. Crane put away. That's looking quite nice. Black and yellow you can only real see from the front. And as you step in, get a few more splashes of the white. You can't really see any other white in there. That is a bit of a shame. I'm glad we did the air intake white now. Otherwise, it would just be black and yellow in there. Although, it probably would still look very, very good. Let's get you up in the air. Let's get the gearbox, the exhaust, and the drive shaft all in. And ready to go for this beautiful Coyote-powered Ford Escort Mark 1. I don't want the exhaust, so we're just going to go in for the engine. There we go. Gearbox in you go in the matte yellow. A much darker matte yellow than everything else because these parts do come out incredibly bright. If I just whack the torch on, you can see it's pretty close the block is darker than the other two pieces anyway but there we go in with the starter just in a cheeky little white and then we'll get this drive shaft in which we've black chromed out there we go on you go and down the back on you go then we've got the exhaust now obviously we already know this is all going to be in a lovely forced chrome black so let's just get it all in and then see how good it looks in just a moment let's step away from this and step back a little bit all black under there i did kind of expect that and you've got the white sort of cross member at the back there coming into them black exhaust. Let's just put it down on the ground a second. I want to see if you can see them exhaust pipes from the back. You can a little bit. You have to be a bit further away. But they look pretty sweet. Pleased with them. That's looking fantastic. We're going to get liquids topped up. Wheels done. Windows tinted. And then we'll get this beautiful car outside in the sun. Well, there we have it then. All finished with the Mark 1 Escort and its Coyote V8 under the hood there. This one's modded in by Payne. It looks absolutely fantastic. Link in the description below if you want to grab this one for yourself. If you don't already have it, and well done to French Toast. I believe made all the liveries for these. At least that's what it says. Although I do know Payne occasionally makes mistakes saying the liveries are by French Toast when there isn't any liveries. There obviously are liveries, just not 100% sure if they're by French Toast. Let's talk about these beautiful, beautiful wheels then. These are the Rims 7B. I've got on there, obviously, Payne's tyre pack. Available through his Patreon if you want to head over and grab that one yourself. Or Dead Bob 777 is probably a better one to say. Because that's what you need to look for on Patreon. But there we go. The rims are the 7B. The fronts here are a 17-inch rim. A 245 width. Plus an ET of 90 to bring this all the way out. And they're a, a 25 profile on there. Not looking bad at all. Very, very pleased with them. Down the back, similar size. Still a 17-inch rim. These are 285 width with a 30 profile, but only ET of 20 needed to bring these rear wheels out to how you see them. Looking fantastic in there. Absolutely love this car. Let's jump around to the correct side and check out this interior. Obviously, we changed the front seats and the back seats. I'm just going to go and look at the back seats very quickly. Looking pretty good in there. Still with the multicolored striping with the yellow and black and that beautiful black steering wheel. The rest of the interior, the ECU sits inside the car. That's a nice little touch. I quite like that. But there we go. The rest of this is all absolutely perfect. I would love a Mark 1 Escort. If anyone wants to buy me one, I live in South Devon, you'll find me. It's easy. We'll sort it out, but it's cool. Anyway, let's get this one started and see what the Escort sounds like with the Coyote engine. That is a nice, mean-sounding tick over or idle on there. Sounding pretty good. Let's give it some gas. Sounding a lot meaner at that top end. Absolutely loving that. That sounds incredible. But let's get this Mark 1 Escort onto the dyno. See what its horsepower is today and what this one's drag rating will be. Here we are then on the dyno with our Mark 1 Ford Escort and its V8 Ford Coyote engine. 285 factory horsepower. Started at 240 before we swapped it. How much have we added and what will its drag rating be? A gain of 301 horsepower, more than a whole new engine on top of there, 106%, taking us up to 586 horsepower in total. Not too bad from a Mark 1 Escort, I can say, for definite. It does give this one a drag rating of in A class or in the top category, but only 620, so we're not very far in to that top category. It should make some opponents quite interesting. Good looking forward to seeing who we're going to have on the drag strip today. Let's go and have a look. At the gearbox tuning setup first. There she is. A 2.83 ratio. 100 kilometers an hour in first gear. 
up to 360 kilometers an hour in fifth gear not sure we'll quite get up to that high but we will see where we get in a moment on the drag strip there are no carburetors on this one but obviously the ecu is fully tuned and ready to go so let's get this beast onto the drag strip and see what we can do with it well, we've made it to the drag strip. The first time the Mark 1 Escort has been on the drag strip. Pretty exciting. So let's get into it. King of the Sands, one mile, A class, pay our thousand entry fee. And who have we got with us today? Sort of a pleasant little Mitch. 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 Pleasant little mix is the words I was looking for right there. Our first race is against the Pagani Harira. That is not fair. Definitely does not seem fair to me. We might lose in our first race. Uh, we've got Mercedes Benz 500E, the wide body version. Uh, Matteo's in the Jeep Cherokee race car just down there, liking that. Killer slash Pi Newton's in the Jim Carner 3 Ford Fiesta. Good car, that one, loving that. Buck Shorts in a Batmobile. And that's about all of our friends. But let's get into our first race against the Pagani Huayra. I don't think we're going to be able to beat that, but there's only one way to find out. Let's go. I'd like to speak to whoever's in charge about pairing us up, because this seems wildly unfair. A Pagani Huayra, absolutely insane hypercar versus a Mark 1 Ford Escort. Yes, it's got a V8 Ford Coyote engine in there, but still, that does not seem fair. I think we might lose in our first race again, which would be very disappointing. But let's get in. Let's find out. Let's go. Off the line. Takes a little bit of while to get the power into them rear wheels. Into second. <laughs> into third. I don't think we're ever going to catch that, Pagani. Oh, are we? We are catching it. Are we going to get in front of it? I think we might be in front of it. We are in front of it. Can we hold this lead all the way down to the end? We're into fifth gear. If we could beat that Pagani, I'll be so impressed. Come on, little Mark 1 Escort. You can do it. Get across the finish line and win. There we go. I think we won. We did win. Definitely very happy with that. 10.450 seconds to the quarter of a mile. Definitely not the best there. I was definitely hoping for a little bit better. Genuinely aiming for under 10 seconds, but that was yeah that didn't happen one mile at 25.126 seconds beating out that pagani by just about half a second there which i'm still impressed with but a top speed of 331 kilometers an hour i can't believe we beat the pagani huayra let's get back let's see who's next so we knocked out the stupidly insane hypercar and now we're against the ford fiesta jim car number three so it isn't a standard ford fiesta but then our Mark 1 Escort isn't a standard Escort. Anyway, so there we go. Mercedes-Benz made it through. Um, who else did we get? Matteo was knocked out, sadly. I knew there was somebody down there. Killer is our next opponent, so that'll be interesting. And Buckshot did make it through in the Pursuit Mode. Batmobile versus Dodge Charger. Dom Toretto, Fast and Furious 1 stunt car. But anyway, let's get back to our race. Ford Fiesta Jim Carner 3 versus the Ford Escort Mark 1 Ford Coyote Engine. I mean, at least it's not a Hoonicorn, right? I mean, I know it's another Ken Block vehicle, but at least it's not a Hoonicorn. I do absolutely love that Fiesta, that Jim Carner Fiesta. The delivery, everything about that car is absolutely stunning, and I love it. But I hope we beat it, sorry, Pi, in our Mark 1 Escort with a Ford Coyote V8 engine in there. Let's find out. Let's go. Off the line. Come on, little Escort, into second. Can we catch the Fiesta into third? Got to kind of make sure we stay straight as well because it does like to weave just a little bit. We are going past the Fiesta. Definitely happy with that. Let's hope we can keep this up, get across that finish line with a win under our belt, make it into the next round or potentially make it into the final. Is this run going to be better than our first run though? Trying not to steer and across the line. What have we got for this one? 10.435, ever so slightly better, but still not great. I was getting better runs while I was practicing and tuning this one, if I'm being honest. 25.137 to the one mile. So we were quicker in this run in the quarter of a mile, but slower in the one mile. But the same, same speed of 331 kilometers an hour. But we did win. We did make it through to the next round. So I'm definitely happy about that. Sorry, Pi. You had a beautiful car. Just couldn't quite beat the Coyote powered Mark 1 Escort. Up next for us is a French toast creation, the Rayfield Caliburn Yellow Steel. Now, when we beat, built this Rayfield Caliburn, we built the FTE or the French Toast Exclusive, which was uh, the most powerful one that, that was available. So this isn't quite as powerful as that, but he has stopped that one from spawning in the drag strip. So it doesn't just absolutely destroy everybody. So that should be an interesting race. And then we've got Buckshot versus the Batmobile Pursuit Mode versus the Batmobile Pursuit Mode. It's just Batmobile Pursuit Mode. So one of them is going to be in the final. 
Will we make it? Or will it be the Rayfield Caliburn Yellow Steel? Beautiful styling on that Rayfield Caliburn. Very modern, very stylish, very cyberpunk. Looks absolutely fantastic against our yellow Mark I Escort with the Coyote Powerhouse under the hood. Who's going to win? Let's get in. Let's go. Off the line. Come on, little Coyote engine. Just get up there. We've tweaked a little bit to the left there. Let's get it straight again. I'm not going to cross the line. I don't want to cross the line. We've got it. I think we've held it there. We are in the lead against the Rayfield Caliber and the Yellow Steel. Can we make that last, though, and get this beast of a car down the end of the finish line, down the end of the drag strip, and across the finish line with the best time and speed of the day? Let's find out. We're across the line. Will it be any good? A little bit of waving up to the left a bit there. 10.394 is our fastest quarter of a mile run recorded of the day. 25.078, definitely our fastest one mile time of the day as well, with a top speed of 331 kilometers an hour. And we have made it into the final, which means we will be racing against one of the Batmobile Pursuit modes. Will it be Buckshot or will it be Random Person Game Name? Not sure really what to say about that, but let's go. Let's go find out. It is me versus Buckshot, Batmobile versus Mark 1 Escort. Let's just get into it and let's see what happens. Billionaire Vigilante versus person who plays video games online. Yeah, that doesn't seem fair. But anyway, we know the Batmobile is incredible. If you watch this channel, you know the Speederboard Crusher is the top, top spec Batmobile. This isn't that one. This is Pursuit Mode. Still should be pretty fast called pursuit mode for a reason against our coyote powered ford escort i don't think we're gonna win but come on box shot trip over or something on the way let's go off the line into second that might have been a little bit early there but we seem to be holding it down quite well into third don't seem to be getting closer to the line we are in front of the batmobile into fourth gear bit of a late gear change there now we're sort of moving towards the middle a little bit let's try and get you straight into top gear are we gonna win i think we are gonna win i don't know let's just get across the finish line find out our speeds and times that's going on the board that's it final race done we did win and the pursuit mode batmobile i didn't even think it was gonna finish then almost over five seconds behind us to the one mile that is unacceptable i generally thought that was gonna be a lot better than that but never mind 10.471 seconds to the quarter of a mile was our slowest run of the day 25.165 to the one mile is also our slowest run of the day. So the top speed at 331 kilometers an hour. Still the same as all of our other ones. I am definitely surprised we beat the Batmobile. I know it's only the pursuit mode, but I mean, I thought it would do better than that. Gets up to 225 insanely fast and then just doesn't really do much more after that. So there we go. We've won. Let's get back. Let's collect our winnings and see how much we can sell the beautiful Mark 1 Escort for. And if we can make some tasty little profit. There it is. Love getting the drag strip winnings. 11,250. Considering I didn't think we were going to win that first race against Pagani Horaira, thought we were going to go out there. I'm quite impressed that we made it all the way through and got back and won the tournament. Let's get back to the garage. Get ready to sell our escort. Well, that Coyote Powerhouse wasn't quite as good as I thought it was going to be, but there we go. 10.394 seconds to the quarter of a mile, 25.078 seconds to the one mile, and 331 kilometers an hour being the top speed. Pits it 54th on the speeder board out of 68 cars, but it is only a little over a second slower than the Ford GT40. So I'm not, you know, it's not horrendous. It isn't the best, but we'll take it. Not too shabby at all. Let's talk some facts and figures about this beautiful little Mark 1 Escort. I bought the car for 14000 and 26 at the very beginning of the episode. I could have sold it at a loss of 1,485, but we didn't do that. I spent another 86,683 modifying, upgrading, tuning, and painting this beautiful, beautiful Mark 1 Escort, paying our total spend at 100,000. And 70, no, 100,709 is the precise words I was looking at. And I also lost control of all of my camera motions there. But there we go. Will we be able to make a profit from this beautiful little Mark 1 Escort? Obviously, we've made a little bit of money, 10,250 from our drag strip runnings already. So let's get in and let's take a look. Well, there she is, all finished, all 100% complete, looking fantastic. Have loved this one. Obviously, that engine ramped up to 586 horsepower from a 280, no, 240 starting, 
obviously when we swapped the coyote it was 285 instead but there we go up a hundred and five percent a little bit more i think it was actually 106 percent but there we go can we make a profit a hundred thousand seven hundred nine is what we spent wow that's actually low 102,879 is our sale price we can make a little bit of profit 2170 profit is what we're making from this one which isn't bad Profit is a profit nonetheless. Obviously, plus our drag strip winnings of 10,250 leaves us 12,420 profit from the beautiful Mark 1 Escort. That Coyote engine, not the most insane beast we've ever put in a car, but it definitely is one of the best looking ones. That looks absolutely beautiful in there. Well and truly love that. What do you guys think? Do let me know in the comments below, but it is time to sell on the beautiful little Escort. Off you go for our tasty little bit of profit, but we will take it nonetheless what have we got up next well up next is an aston martin an absolute stunning beast of an aston martin this is the 777 edition aston martin vantage it looks absolutely wild and insane and i cannot wait to get stuck into this one did we get a good deal i did i'm shocked i've surprised myself there 76,375 is what i paid and i could sell it already for 82,542 making 6,000 167 but we won't be doing that we're going to be upgrading this beautiful v12 am11 engine 636 factory horsepower what do you think we'll end up with by the end of the next video that should be a pretty wild this is what we're going to be working on next time though so uh, thank you very much for watching what did you think of today's build do let me know in the comments below i always love to hear from you and while you're down there leaving a little comment do let me know if you've got any suggestions for cars you'd like to see built in this game, whether they be based off a lore car, a DLC car, or a mod car that you have seen out and about. Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day, whatever you're getting up to. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.